In order to celebrate the release of Northlane's brand new record Obsidian, today I'll be showing you how to master their latest single Carbonized using a collection of very easily available digital plugins. Let's get straight to it. Right, here we go from the start. Should mention I love, love this record. It's basically the closest thing we have to Matrix Metal. Right, so that's Nolly's raw mix. Basically very round, very thick. So our goal as mastering engineers is of course to funnel things more up into the upper mid-range, up into the highs, increase the, the total harmonic distortion and the euphonic way, and get a little bit more excitement so this can transport across to a wider array of speaker systems. We're of course going to do this using the usual array of tools, beginning with my favorite EQ for boosting, the Ivory M2 based on a Masilek MEA2, I believe this is an acoustical audio plugin. So first thing we do is turn the pre on, kind of gives it a little bit of a uh, bit of saturation, kind of zings up the top end. Not a massive difference, but it kind of has the perceptible effect of kind of filtering out the sub lows and making the highs a little bit more sparkly. We're of course going to aid this by setting the highest band to a shelf and then boosting the top end. Cool, not too much. We'll carve out the rest using more surgical EQ after this. So we of course move on to a very ubiquitous plugin, Pro-Q3. One of the first things that we want to do is set it to mid-side mode down here. And then what I'm going to do is actually lower the level of the mid-channel because I find that the raw mix is a little bit kind of pingy, the transients are very loud and the guitars aren't quite as enveloping or wide as I want them to be. So I'm going to do this manually for you. Go back to zero. About a 0.26 dB cut of the the middle channel. Now you don't want to go too far with this, otherwise you'll lose the lead vocal. Always a danger when it comes to things like this. Now it's very round sounding, it's very subby. One of the first things that I look to do is to make sure the sub low band is controlled. Luckily I have a subwoofer to let me know what's going on down there. So the main line, now, very easily preset here. In this case, I've got a high pass filter at 23.695 hertz, 18 dB per octave. You can, of course, set it to something like 12 dB per octave and then set it lower because the actual filter reaches up higher. But uh, in my case, I do tend to like the 18 dB per octave. So. Just a little bit tighter now with the EQ boosting the highs as well as the one cutting the sub low. Now it's still very round, it's lacking a little bit that uh, that top end aggression, especially in the choruses. It doesn't quite bring across all that energy that I want. I can hear the, the synth layers in the back and I can hear the guitars, they're there, but they're not quite in my face. So one thing I want to do is I want to boost the upper mids, but in the side channel only. There we go. Just under 1 dB is about perfect. Let's try it on different parts of the track. The new metal breakdown, what better? <laughs> All right, without any processing. With the processing. So we're controlling the sub low band and making a little bit more body with the EQ. The rest, believe it or not, we can do using purely saturation, compression, and just manipulating our maximizer tools. So let's do that. The next stage is, of course, compression. I use the ubiquitous BX Townhouse compressor. In a perfect world, I'll probably use a hardware SSL style compressor for this in order to round out the transients. I'm not too fond of the slappiness of the kick and the, the snare. It's a very kind of digital artifact from a lot of 
mid to slow attack digital compression. When you stack enough of it over time, you tend to get that kind of untouched transient character. This is one of the places where us purists tend to bust out the, the analog gear and talk uh, infinitely about how, how much better the old days were. <laughs> anyway, for now, we're going to use the digital comp to try and approximate that effect. So I've got it set to two to one ratio. You don't want it to be too obvious in its operation. We've got the attack set to 0.3 MS. So it's very, very fast, very, very slappy as well. And we've got the release set to order. With that, very kind of loose sounding, and with, even though the needle is barely moving, it's adding this very pronounced effect to the music, it's tightening it up, giving it thickness, we're kind of pushing it into our face as well. Now, one thing I'm also doing is a sidechain filter at just around about 60 hertz. This allows the kick to still poke through, even though we're still choking down on the snare and the other transients in the mix. So. Very, very cool. The next step is my classic satin sort of preset. We leave the low band untouched. We have a crossover about 236 hertz. And what we're doing here is what I'll show you. So you can hear it getting thicker and warmer as I jog up the drive. The drive is just parallel. Well, right now it's not parallel. Right now it's serial saturating everything in the low mid band and above. I like doing this because it maintains the clarity in the lows, but it gives that excitement to the mids and highs, which is something that you generally want in mastering. So what we're going to do now is pull it down, set it into parallel. So we're going to jog it and combine it with the serial signal. That way we're going to get the, the enhancement effects in the mids without choking all the transients out of it. There we go. I love to teach you, but you love to love so you can immediately hear it gets thicker, the, the low mid band gets somehow fuller and more analog. This is, after all, the effect that you would get from running it through transformer heavy analog gear. This is something that we're adding in artificially after the fact, because of course, digital processes are far more clean than the analog equivalents would be. So satin is really good for adding some of that stuff back in. Now that that's added back in, we can get to the leveling and volume portion of the video. Now we're going to do this on the final chorus for the simple reason that the chorus is when all the layers hit together, it is the, the penultimate, the densest part of the song, and it's where I want to set the level barometer for. So we're going to jump to our first limiter. It's going to be the flatline limiter by Submission Audio. Let's dial it in. Perfect. One thing I love about this tool and the way I designed it on purpose is to make it supremely easy to dial in. First thing, threshold sets your desired volume, you know, compared to how much clipping of the transient content and material that you want. In this case, negative 9.84 is pretty much perfect for me, maintains a bit of breath in the music, doesn't choke off the transients too much, but gets me the excitement and the level that I want. The wave shaper, meanwhile, kind of helps soften the transients, add an additional layer of saturation, and kind of recesses that kick in the snare back into the mix just a little bit more. So about 95% in this case is about perfect for me. We'll try it in a different section. starting to sound proper now. It's starting to sound closer to the actual record, which is where you want it to go as a, as a mastering engineer, obviously. It's got the more exciting top end, really nice and glassy, and the guitars are more bitey, but it's still got that roundness that Nolly intended for the mix. Pretty much the ideal circumstance for me as a mastering engineer. Now, one thing I'm going to do is run it into a second maximizer, something to add in a, like a tertiary layer of saturation, as well as kind of adding its own flavor to the experience and getting us around about a dB of extra level. So that is, of course, the L2 limiter. I almost always run this in the all-round style. One thing that I want to do is jog the attack back and I do want to tweak the release. Oh, it's actually pre-tweaked for me. That's great. Normally it defaults at about four to 500, I believe. I want to drag it all the way back down to about 132. So it's nice and snappy. But what I'll do is I'll actually dial these controls while we listen to the music so you can actually tell what's going on. Yeah. 
So one thing that dragging the attack down does is control the transients even more, subdues the kick and the snare. Same effect on the transient stereo into leaving control here. Basically, the more uh, connected the two channels are, the more intact your transients become. But the less you interleave them, the more you disconnect the the two uh, the two channels from each other, the more diffuse the transients become. Which in this case is absolutely perfect because I still think the kick and the snare are quite pingy, and I want the guitars to be really enveloping and nice and analog on this one. So I actually drop that back down, help diffuse the center image, and it kind of gives us more of that surreal wide stereo effect. And the release basically speaks for itself. The more you drag it down, the more punchy the content becomes, the more subsequent transients are allowed to punch through. Yeah, I don't know what circumstance you would want it this high for, but it's certainly not metal music. So for this record, I'd drag it down to about 135, 132, somewhere around about there, depending on the song. And of course, finally, in order to stop the red lights clipping on all of our meters, we go to the output and we set it to negative 0.03 dB. That's just the safety net I put in for the CD exports. If you're printing something for, let's say, online purposes that's going to be normalized or something that's going to be converted to MP3, I would probably set this to about 1 negative 1 dB, gives you a decent amount of headroom for the faux overs that MP3 and AAC compression will do. This is probably something that I'll do for the final output level of this video before it graces your ears in the end here on YouTube. So bear that in mind, different output levels for different platforms. But at the end of the day, the volume that you're going for, the amount of maximization for the music shouldn't really be impacted by this. You're literally just going for the kind of level that will make the music sing at its utmost. And that's basically the track done and fully mastered. Let's take a quick listen through the first section and then call it a day. In case you've forgotten how far we've come in these last 10 or so minutes, let me show you the original raw mix. With the mastering chain. So this is what happens when a really good mix from somebody like Nolly meets with a very, I'd say, subdued, conservative, but still very potent mastering chain. Ultimately, there's no undoing bad mixes, so when you start with really good ingredients, you definitely don't want to work against them. You just want to help augment them and shape them in that right direction to make it sound as good as possible for as many speaker systems that are out there. So that's North Lane's Carbonized Mastered. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Northlane's new record is filled with bangers like Carbonized. Consider clicking up here or down here for more audio engineering tutorials, and of course check the links in the description down below for a copy of Flatline as well as my old classic mixing text, The Systematic Mixing Guide. Subscribe for more content in the future, and until next time, I'll see you all later.